Today I'm revealing the new adjustable strobe navigation light system for RC airplanes and other applications. This new system can be adjusted to whatever frequency of flash and duration of the flash you want. It's still based off the triple five timer circuit, which makes it really simple, reliable and cheap to manufacture. And speaking about manufacturing, this project was made possible thanks to JLC PCB, who is sponsoring this video. If you like making electronics, you have a project in mind or you need to work on a science project, there are many options when it comes to ordering PCBs. JLC PCB is the best on the industry for small and large quantities, top-notch quality but the best part is the price. A cup of coffee can be more expensive than ordering 5 PCBs from them. So check out JLC PCB on the link in the description below. In the past I've made an even simpler LED blinker, which is minuscule and lightweight but does exactly the same job as this new one, except that it's not adjustable. It only blinks at a fixed rate, similar to the frequency of the real strobe lights of full-scale airplanes. The circuit is perfect for both small and big RC airplanes, and I've used it in many airplanes. But what if you need to have a specific blinking frequency and on time of the flash? Well, that's why I made this new version. The board is a bit bigger because I had to accommodate these new potentiometers to control the circuit, but the principle is the same. Now the application for the circuit is wider because you can use it not only for RC airplanes, but for anything that requires a blinking light. The turn lights of a car, for example, or for a bicycle, so you are more visible during the winter. So many applications you can use the circuit for. I've made the first prototype to see how it works, and I found some flaws. First, I need to add a resistor before the potentiometers, because if I accidentally put both of them at zero resistance, the raw voltage damages the triple five timer integrated circuit. And that happened to me several times, until I figure it out. Why something simple like this was happening to me? Well, because I did this with little knowledge and experience about electronics. I just know enough to do these things, but not enough to make them perfect and I still manage to figure out things. Which is a reminder that if I can do this kind of projects, anyone can. Anyhow, I then temporarily fixed the mistake with a 3 kilo ohm resistor and started doing some tests. The new version will not only have the resistor before the potentiometers, but also a shocky diode to protect the circuit of reverse polarity connections. Also another way of frying the circuit. It also has a very small LED to see if it's working before connecting it to any other LEDs at the output. That way you can also troubleshoot if an LED is not working, but you know that the board works perfectly. To test the circuits, I built a simple testing board as you can see. Here I have two LEDs soldered. The circuit can work perfectly with one cell batteries, or a minimum of 3 volts, and a maximum of 5.5 volts. I've tried using more than that, but I just burned the ship again. So for now, only 5.5 volts allowed. Just like with the older version. The LEDs I use are very popular high power 1 watt LEDs. I normally use the white ones, but you can find them in many different colors and power ratings as well. I've tested connecting up to 8 LEDs to the circuit and it can handle it with no problem. I normally use 2 LEDs though. If you connect an external relay to a higher load circuit, then you can turn on and off big lights to create signal lights, or stuff like that. And how does the circuit work? And I mean how to adjust it. It's very simple. You just move the potentiometers to the desired position and just see the results in real time with the LEDs flashing. From left to right, with the first potentiometer, you will control how long you want the flash to last and the second potentiometer will control how long is the space between every flash. And that's basically it. The design process was very easy using ECEDA, a free online tool that works seamlessly with JLC PCB and the components from LCSC. You can also order your STM service from JLC PCB, where they solder all the components for you, except the through hole components, saving you a lot of time and effort. You'll find the link of this project in the description below, where you can modify it, improve it, and share it again with us so the community can use it for anything. The project includes schematics and the PCV design that you can order from JLC PCV.
Well guys, that's it for this project. Remember not to click on the dislike button or some terrible monsters will appear under your bed at night. And also subscribe to have the chance to win a car, $3 million and a house with indoor pool. And please don't ask me any question about electronics because I don't really know. Most of my knowledge is about airplanes. So see you soon in the next project.